grace and peace to you from God, our Creator, and the Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning, and welcome to online worship with Orange Beach Presbyterian Church. My name is Kim, I'm the pastor here, and what a joy it is to worship together this morning. Just a quick announcement before we begin. Uh, every January and every July, those are our two months that we do food drives for the Christian Service Center. So uh, we are in the middle of January. If you would like to donate food, I do have a plastic box, uh, one of those tubs set up right outside the church office doors. You can come by any time and drop your food in there. I'll empty it out every day and we'll collect all of the food. We will bring it to the Christian Service Center at the end of the month. If you would prefer to make a financial donation, also fine, that's wonderful. You can mail a check um, to the church, make the check out to the church. Just be sure to put CSC in the memo. Um, and you can mail that to our P.O. Box. Again, that's 306 in Orange Beach, um, right here in Alabama, 36561. You can also donate online. Go to our website, orangebeachpresbyterian.org. Click the Give Now button. And just make sure in the notes section, you leave a little note saying what portion of that um, is going to the Christian Service Center. And now let us prepare for worship with our call to worship. All of the words that you will need for today's service will be right on your screen. So won't you join me? Jesus says, I am the way for you. And so we come to follow Christ. Jesus says, I am the truth for you. And so we come to dwell in the light. Jesus says, I am the life for you. And so we come, leaving behind all else to which we cling. Let us worship God. And now let us go into a time of confession. We will pray first silently and then together in the prayer found on your screen. Let us pray. And let us pray together. Creator of the universe, we stand amazed at your power and glory. We are eager to worship you and offer our praise. But when we step away from the safety and glory of this place of worship, we are reluctant to answer when we hear you calling our name. We sing our songs of tribute, but we shy away from the river, lest we be baptized with the fire of the Holy Spirit. 
the confidence with which we proclaim your name on Sunday slips quickly away and is elusive by Monday. Forgive us when we forget your promise to be with us always, O God. Renew us with the power of your ever-present love and strengthen us to proclaim your justice throughout the world. Amen. Even in the midst of doubt and darkness, the light of God is shining in you, on you, and through you. Out of God's great love, we have been redeemed and made whole. Rejoice and believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Before we hear God's written word, let us turn to God in prayer. Let us pray. Gracious God, Lord, we thank you for this day. After a turbulent few days, it is good to stop and worship you, give praise to you, hear and sing the hymns, hear the prayers, hear your word. Lord, we thank you for the technology that makes worshiping together possible, even in a time where we cannot gather together. Lord, we are always united in you. We are always joined because we are your family, and we thank you for that. And Lord, we just pray that you will fill us with your Holy Spirit, opening our ears, our hearts, and our minds, so that as we hear your written word, we will hear your voice and know what you have to say. We pray this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, as together we pray how he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our scripture lesson this week is from the book of Mark, the first chapter, beginning with the fourth verse. And so John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness, preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. The whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem went out to him, confessing their sins, they were baptized by him in the Jordan River. John wore clothing made out of camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. And this was his message. <coughs> After me comes the one more powerful than I, the straps of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Today is the Sunday following Epiphany, known as Baptism of the Lord Sunday. It's the day that we look back and remember Jesus' baptism, and we also remember our own baptisms. You may not remember your baptism if you were baptized as an infant or a small child. You may have been baptized as an adult and you do remember it. But baptisms mark us. They mark us as God's own. They mark us to be a part of God's family forever, for the rest of our lives. And today we read the story of Jesus's baptism. We tend to think of baptism as a purely Christian practice, but if that were true, John the Baptist wouldn't have been baptizing people in the Jordan River. He wasn't baptizing them the way that we do in the name of God the Creator, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Long before Jesus came, the tradition was part of the Jewish faith. It's still part of the Jewish faith, only it's not called baptism. It's the Jewish practice of mikvah. It's a ritual cleansing. They describe it in Leviticus. It's constructed, mikvah is constructed to be a cleansing ritual. They often will create spaces for this to happen connected to the Jordan River so that the water is living water, but typically set back a bit so that it's sheltered from the current of the river. It's a ceremonial cleansing that happened before coming into the presence of God in the temple. You also would have a mikvah before you got married, or if you did something that made them unclean, like touching a dead body was considered unclean. And so you would have a mikvah and that would make you clean. John the Baptist was preaching about repentance and it's customary for people to do a ritual cleansing as part of their annual celebration of Rosh Hashanah, the Jewish New Year, and Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement. Mikvah is still practiced today in the synagogues. They will often connect it to some kind of um, cistern or source of water so that they have the living water. And Jesus' baptism, this is part of this mikvah, only it wasn't to be cleansed. It wasn't because Jesus was unclean. A mikvah can also be the start of something, a new beginning, a fresh start. And Jesus's baptism, that was the beginning of his public ministry, living out his purpose, the call on his life. Of course, Jesus didn't need cleansing from sin, but it was good for Jesus to be baptized. It was good for him to come forward for this mikvah because what a beginning, the beginning of something so huge. We see it in all four of the gospels. It's the first time we see Jesus as an adult. We skip over all those childhood years. <coughs> in Matthew, Jesus' story begins with the genealogy and the angel appearing to Joseph and then we hear the Christmas story. And then the very next thing that happens is Jesus meeting John the Baptist in the desert. All four gospels tell us that as Jesus was being baptized, the heavens opened and the Holy Spirit descended upon him like a dove. In the gospel of John, we hear, when God sent me to baptize with water, he told me, the one on whom you see the Spirit descend and rest is the one who will baptize with the Holy Spirit. I saw this happen to Jesus, so I testify that he is the chosen one of God. The Spirit descending was an outward sign of an inward truth of who Jesus was. God in the flesh, God's own Son. And you hear God's voice. <coughs> This is my beloved son. With him I am well pleased. Those are words similar to what we hear in Isaiah 42, 
where we hear, Here is my servant, whom I uphold, my chosen, in whom my soul delights. I have put my spirit upon him. He will bring forth justice to the nations. Jesus comes to the Jordan River to be baptized by John the baptizer, who's offering a mikvah for repentance. And it becomes an ordination. It becomes an anointing for ministry. We remember Jesus' baptism (coughs) because of who he is and what he did in his life and his death and his resurrection. So what does that baptism mean for us? What is Jesus' baptism? Why is that important for us to remember? Well, he was human. He was like us. Remember when he came to John, John argues with him. I shouldn't baptize you. Me? Baptize you? You should be baptizing me. And I think that's a pretty appropriate reaction. I mean, if Jesus came to you and said, would you do this? Wouldn't your first response be, like, you're Jesus. Who could do it better than you? I'm, I'm not even worthy. And yet, Jesus tells him, You have to do it. It's right and good. You have to baptize me. He brings John into his ministry right as it's beginning. John is part of Jesus' ministry on earth. And we, we are part of Jesus' ministry on earth too. We might not be John the Baptist. We might not be preaching in the wilderness dipping people in the Jordan River, we might not be baptizing Jesus Christ, but the work that we do (coughs) here on earth, the work that we are doing for God is important. It is God's work. God does call us, and we are part of his family. We are all children of God in this together, and I love I love the explanation of baptism when you're talking to to kids. You always try to make it to where they can understand it. And and so you say, baptism is like bringing you into the family. It's like when you get a new pet and you welcome it into the family, or when you get a new baby brother or sister and you welcome that baby into the family, and then forever and ever, they're yours. They're your family. It's like that when we're baptized. We often have either water or the sign of a cross on our forehead and it's because we are marked and sealed and part of the family of God not just at that moment when we are baptized but from that moment forward forever and ever God has claimed us God wants us and that's both exciting and humbling I can understand John's point (coughs) of saying How on earth could I be worthy enough to baptize the Son of God? I mean, I get it. But God does call all of us to work and to work together and to work for the glory of God. And baptism does mark the beginning of our lives in the kingdom of God, living out our purpose and the call on our lives as people living in obedience to God. That's the commitment that we make when we take baptism vows or the vows that our parents took if we were baptized as infants. We take vows because baptism is a serious commitment. As the congregation, you take vows to help people in their spiritual walk, to raise up children together to be a part of the family of God. If you are baptized as an adult, You proclaim that Jesus is your Lord and Savior. You take this outward step and you are sealed forever, claimed by God. That kind of belonging is amazing. That kind of promise is binding. And just imagine... Imagine being at the Jordan River when this was taking place, of knowing something big was happening, even if you didn't realize exactly what was happening or how big it was. Imagining, imagine seeing this man 
going into the river and having this little intimate conversation with John the Baptist. Imagine going into the water, seeing him go into the water and coming up and a dove and the voice of God, this is my son with whom I am well pleased. It doesn't say what the people did, what they heard or, or how or if they believed it. <coughs> Perhaps it was only Jesus himself hearing the words, this is my son being claimed by God, knowing that this was the exciting beginning of your new ministry. You know, I was pretty excited about the beginning of a new year. I think we all were pretty excited to say goodbye to 2020. That What a year, right? We had a New Year's Eve prayer service, and part of the service was to say goodbye to 2020, to the bad things that had happened. So much. In our area, hurricanes, not just one hurricane, but more came behind it. The stress and worry of that, the damage, the wind and the rain from the hurricanes, the damage to the church, which is still being fixed, the damage to the community. We talked about the global pandemic that hit in 2020, relatively early on. Back in March, everything just shut down. And so we looked back during that prayer service and we said, let's say goodbye to all of that. 2021 is gonna be a new year. It's a fresh start. We talked about flipping that calendar page, having a brand new calendar, not, not been written in, just fresh for our plans and our appointments, not knowing what will happen. Well, we've had one week of 2021. <coughs> It's been quite a week. <laughs> As somebody put it, um, this week has been a long month. Um, it has felt like a month. It has seemed much longer. We certainly had um, a chaotic uh, and disturbing and troubling start to 2021. So um, one week in, <laughs> and I'm ready for another new beginning. I'm ready to start fresh again. I'm, I'm ready to... Uh, put some of this behind us and we still have a ways to go before that will happen. We're still in the um, aftermath of uh, what happened in our capital and, um, and it's gonna be a struggle and it's going to be painful and I'm not loving the way this year has started out. The good news is every day is a fresh start. Every day we can remember our baptism. Every morning when we wake up, we can say, regardless of what unfolds today, good or bad, wonderful or disastrous or somewhere in between, we are starting fresh. Today is a new day. Today is a gift from God. I am God's child, claimed by God in my baptism. Every day can be a new start. And every day can be a new opportunity for ministry, a new opportunity to spread God's love, to share your faith story, to, to spread the gospel. You know, I have to wonder exactly how much Jesus knew coming into this. When he was 12 and his parents thought he was lost and then they found him in the temple and he was teaching already, did he know at 12 years old? what his life would hold? Did he know as he was baptized, as he went down into the water, as he was raised up, as the dove landed on him, as he heard the voice of God, this is my son. Did he know that he would die on the cross? Did he know that he would feed 5,000 people with a small basket of some fish and bread? Did he know that he would walk the walk that he did? Did he know that he would weep at the death of a friend? Did he know about all the miracles? You hear that Christmas hymn or that, that song <coughs> very often, Mary, did you know? And there's always a lot of talk about it. Like, of course she knew. The Holy Spirit came to her. God came to her. The angel told her. Of course she knew. 
but you wonder if she really knew everything that was going to happen. And I wonder often if Jesus knew, and I wonder if this was the point perhaps that he would have known, the immersion into the water, the rising up, the dove, the voice. It was the beginning of his ministry, and I have to wonder what he knew about the end, but of course we don't know. Scripture doesn't tell us. But he did encounter both good and bad. This is the Son of God who was baptized by John the Baptist in the Jordan River, and he still encountered a difficult road. He still had to deal with people who were unkind to him and didn't know what he was trying to say. He still had to convince people that they were loved by God and worthy of that love. He still had to mourn the death of a friend. He still had to comfort those who were mourning. He still had to face his accusers. He still had to face the mockery and be beaten and crucified. He still had three days before rising. He still had all of that in front of him. So new beginnings, this mikvah, this baptism, the start of his ministry, it's not always going to be perfect. It's not always going to be easy. And certainly the days and weeks ahead of us in this country are going to be painful for a lot of different reasons. But we have the chance, again, each and every day, a new day, to do ministry, to walk the walk, to go forward and say, it's not always going to be the happiest of days, but every day God is with me. I am God's own forever. I am God's beloved. And I will go forward not only knowing that, but comforted in that and energized by that and emboldened by that. Go forward with each day as a new beginning. Go forward ready to encounter all kinds of new and exciting and sometimes difficult things, knowing that God accompanies you. Every day, remember your baptism. However it went, whether it was dunked full in water or a little bit of water on your head, however that went, whatever that looked like, that touch of water, that cleansing act, that claiming by God to be in God's family forever and ever and ever. Amen. Let us now pray for and with one another. Just a reminder, too, that we do have a prayer service every Thursday evening <coughs> on our Facebook page. That's at 7 p.m. Uh, is when it goes live. It stays up there, so you can go anytime and check it out. But it's a good place to name specific prayers, requ prayer requests or joys that you have that you would like to share. Um, if you have other requests that you would like the congregation to know about, you can always be in touch with, um, with me or with the church. You can email, text, call. Um, and we'd be happy to add your, again, your request or your joy to our prayer list. And now, let us pray. Gracious God, O oh Lord, you are so good. You heap blessings upon us and take delight when we smile. And Lord, there are certainly joys to be found around us. <coughs> but in addition to those joys, our hearts are broken. We are shocked and angered and dismayed at the events in our nation's capital. On the day of Epiphany, the day that we celebrate the, ch the Christ child, we watched our nation's capital be broken into, vandalized, disrespected. Lord, first of all, we pray that we will not make idols out of things, that we will not make idols out of buildings or things or flags or symbols, that we will not make an idol even out of our love for our country 
but that we will always put you first, that we will strive for your kingdom more than we strive for our own nation. But God, it's so hard when you love your country to see this kind of unrest. It is so difficult to see a beloved landmark of this country be defiled by people who want to do harm. Lord, we just pray for peace. We pray for peace to come. We pray for those who are guilty to be brought to justice. But most of all, we pray for those who have hate in their hearts to be washed anew, to find love, to find your love, to wash them clean. Lord, we pray for our own hearts, where there is anger, where there is hatred, where there is bitterness. Help us get past that, Lord, so that we might be forgiving and find peace of our own. Not only peace within our hearts, but peace with our neighbors, with our families, with our congregations, with our communities, that we might all seek the best for one another, that we might seek to do what God calls us to do, that we might seek to grow your kingdom in good and wonderful ways until the day comes when swords are turned into plowshares, where there are no nations, only one kingdom, where every knee shall bow. Lord, we long for that day, and it feels like we might never get there some days. Make your presence known to us, Lord. Help us feel you there and guide our footsteps so that we might go where you would have us go. Guide our mouths that we might say what you would have us say. Silence us when we need to be silenced and give us the words to speak when it is our time to be heard. And Lord, we just lift this country up to you. And we ask that we can place it in your hands and that you will bring a broken nation forward to heal together in all of the days ahead. We pray this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. This concludes our online worship service. Thank you so much for joining us. And now, go forth boldly, go out confidently, for God has laid claim to your life. 
by your baptism, you have been marked as God's own forever. In grace, may God watch over you. In strength, may you go in service. Go now in the name of God the Creator, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, now and forevermore. Amen. Children of the Lord said,